Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, October 16th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, a big pharma whistleblower reveals the dirty secrets about adverse vaccine reactions. There's so much people aren't hearing behind the scenes. The safety testing is not like even pharmaceutical drugs. I mean, pharmaceutical drugs slip through the cracks. Well, vaccines slip through, through far bigger cracks. Randy Vaughn. A former Merck employee talks in depth about Gardasil, which is now being pushed on teens, both girls and boys. And Russia is putting on a display of firepower right now in Syria that is shocking the world, embarrassing the Obama administration. Darren McBreen talks about how this latest showdown between superpowers could escalate to a global conflict. Then, government propaganda sinks to comic levels, comic book levels, as Captain America goes liberal and goes against the evil Tea Party. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Well, a controversial school assignment is stirring some outrage amongst parents. Middle schoolers in Florida were asked to choose between saving the lives of white or black people from a sinking ship. Hmm, what does that have to do with history? I'll never know. So these were sixth grade students and they were presented a lifeboat test in which they were forced to save only nine people out of 15. Several high profile figures, including President Obama and Donald Trump, were included in this test alongside some white people, black people, a Hispanic, a male and a female doctor, and a rabbi and a minister. Now, an 11 year old uh, student that was in this class said that she and her fellow classmates immediately protested this assignment. She said everybody in the classroom just got upset about it and said, this is racist, this is racist. Now, the Hillsborough County School District stated that this assignment was merely a team building exercise and denied any racial connotations, okay? It was nothing about being racist or sexist. But here's the ultimate dilemma. What if it was a black conservative? Now, we've already seen how the establishment media has been treating Dr. Ben Carson, uh, but you also may have heard about the outspoken 13-year-old black conservative uh, C.J. Pearson. Um, he had a viral video where he was calling out Obama for his response uh, um, clock kid controversy. Uh, then Obama, of course, blocked him on Twitter. Well, now uh, he's reporting that a teacher at his middle school um, reportedly told his students that CJ is not worth saving in a fire and that he hates him. So Pearson has now accused the teacher of violating the school's bullying policy and the school's principal has promised a full investigation into the matter. So bullying and hate speech is fine if it's coming out of the mouth of a liberal. Of course, they do not want black Americans to get off of that liberal thought plantation. So now we're seeing this type of censorship for anything that's not fitting the establishment agenda. We've seen Germany censoring anyone who is anti-immigration, Facebook as well. Well now, a Captain America comic is going that same route. They are siding with Democrats in Washington, beating up on conservatives who dare follow the Constitution. Uh, now he, it's a new black liberal Captain America and he's deciding that he cannot remain apolitical. He decides to cut ties with S.H.I.E.L.D. and go into business for himself, setting his own agenda. 
Uh, he heads to the southern border. He beats up some evil right-wingers who are threatening innocent, illegal immigrants who just want to be left alone. And so, of course, the evil commander of these right-wingers, he makes these evil statements about building a wall, not wanting illegal immigrants to bring crime and disease into America. They complain about the immigrants taking their jobs and the welfare. Um, they're gun-toting villains in hoods. And, of course, they refer to the hero as Captain Socialism. So you can see where this is going and, of course, probably who the comic is based off of as well. The comic's writer, Nick Spencer, has made it abundantly clear where he stands in the political spectrum. Blatant propaganda coming from every corner. Now, let's talk about uh, something else. Now, just two weeks after the Obama administration announced a plan to globalize local police departments uh, through the Strong Cities Network, now the Obama administration has added a new tool in its fight against violent extremism. It's a new position within the Justice Department. They're going to focus on investigating lone wolf domestic terrorists or extremists. It's the Domestic Terrorism Council, and it's going to focus on who the Obama administration and the controversial Southern Poverty Law Center considers extremists. So, of course, in the past, they have labeled uh, libertarians and patriots as extremists. So we've seen the MIAC report, and we know exactly where they are going with this Domestic Terrorism Council. Now, on Thursday, the former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury for Economic Policy in the Reagan administration, Paul Craig Roberts, told Alex Jones how not only are we going to begin to see the U.S. taking out some of these domestic terrorists, but he also gives a warning for uh, the Russian President Putin. I, I think that uh, Putin's in danger of assassination by the CIA or some, or, or some rogue group. They're probably rogue groups that are far worse than the CIA. Of course. And, and uh, we just don't know about them. And so um, uh, I think they here, uh, they will continue to persecute whistleblowers. Uh, uh, they will continue to move in the direction that criticism of the government is uh, uh, illegal. And they'll first say, you know, you're, you're a domestic extremist. And, uh, and, and they'll find somebody that's easy for people not to like and go along with, and then the next guy will uh, not quite be so easy to dislike, and then finally they'll get whoever they want. That's the way it goes. You exactly. Know, now, coming up, Darren McBreen is going to discuss how this latest showdown between the world's superpowers could escalate into a global conflict. But first, we wanted to air uh, this interview that I did yesterday with Brandy Vaughn. She joined me in studio. She's the founder for the Council of Vaccine Safety, uh, here to discuss what's really behind this dangerous push for mandatory vaccinations. Joining me now is Brandy Vaughn. She is the founder of the Council for Vaccine Safety. She was also a former pharmaceutical sales rep for Merck and is now a very outspoken opponent of mandatory vaccinations. So welcome. It's great to have you in studio. Uh, so talk to me a little bit. What compelled you to found the Council for Vaccine Safety? Well, I'm a former Merck rep, as you said, and I sold Vioxx for Merck. And through that experience, I really saw how corrupt the whole system is. And it ended up being one of the largest corporate payouts um, in, the, in the United States and one of the largest drug recalls, $6 billion in fines. And through that and what kind of went down behind the scenes and what I learned from that, I really realized that the agencies that are meant to protect us from the industry and regulate the drugs and things like that are really, they aren't doing that in, in reality. They're protecting and, their Yeah, <laughs> they're pharma. actually almost a puppet for the pharmaceutical industry at the moment. And my eyes were really open. So I left Merck and I went to Europe and I came back with my son who was six months old, vax free in Europe. They have a whole different mindset on the pharmaceutical industry and vaccines and all of that. And I was told at a doctor's office that I really, my son really needed these. Um, I think it was 16 vaccines to catch him up on schedule and all of this. And I questioned it. I said, ah, uh, I want to look at inserts. You know, i I don't trust the healthcare industry. I don't trust doctors after spending so much time in their offices. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted more information. So he didn't like that answer. The appointment was over. I left. I did um, years of research. Now my son is four and a half years old. And I got into this fight because of SB 277, which was ground zero in California 
for the mandatory vaccine laws that we're going to see sweeping through the country, pushed by the pharmaceutical industry. Right. Merck in particular, because they have an almost monopoly on the childhood vaccine schedule. Wow. So six months ago, that came down in California where I live with my son and my son would be in the first kindergarten class affected by it. It mandates 35 vaccines before children are allowed into the school system, daycare, if that's where they enter a preschool. And so I started speaking out and I realized that I'm going to have to start to share all of what I've learned and all of what I saw behind the scenes because things are going drastically wrong. Right. And And very quickly, very quickly. And so one of the things I, I feel like I always have to point out to people is that in the 1980s, the schedule was far, far different than what there is now. And now, 2016, it's going to be 53 recommended vaccines on the CDC schedule for children un- under six, uh, six and under. And that is far more um, excessive than it was in the 80s. And it's more than any other developed country in the world. Right. And we're our children are suffering from it. What we have right now is the first generation of children that's sicker than their parents. Right. That's when we were record sick, yeah. obese. Yeah. And so right now we're giving 53 more than any other country. We're giving vaccines in utero, which are, you know, vaccines are not studied for toxicity and birth defects. There's a reason for it because right. in lab studies in animals, they show they do get caused birth defects when you give vaccines in preg- to pregnant women. And we're giving six to nine doses. So it begins on the first day of life with the vitamin K shot, with hep B. And then we're giving six to nine doses, sometimes more in each child well, um, well visit. This is nothing any other country does. And to show for it, we have, you know, the highest infant mortality rate in the developed world. Right. The, and the U.S. Um, is far above other countries that give far less vaccines. And we spend uh, more on health care per, cap, per capita um, than any country in the world. So it's not that. And we have um, Mississippi, which is the highest rate of vaccine vaccination in the states of all states, and it has the highest infant mortality rate. So a lot wow. of people say, oh, correlation, you know, not causation. But the government that could do these causation studies, they're not doing it because they're hand in hand with the pharmaceutical industry. So what we have to go on is the fact that our children are now sicker than the generation before. And this is not happening in other countries. And it's never happened in the, you know, for generations in the U.S. And we're seeing epic numbers of, you know, neurological delays, ADHD, speech delays, autism, type 1 diabetes, childhood leukemia, autoimmune issues, epilepsy, asthma, food allergies, psoriasis, eczema, lupus. I mean, the list goes on and on. And, and so let, our children are really suffering. Right. And and, and you mentioned uh, the vitamin K, which I think is sort of a, a new thing that all of a sudden now this is something that children on their first day of birth, they when they're born, they need to have this now. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. your son wasn't given it there in Holland. They didn't even know about it. So you hadn't even done a lot of research into why th- this is being given. Uh, but it was interesting here because Rob Dew, he just, our producer, he just had uh, his fourth child, a little girl. And so they wanted to give this vitamin K and he said, well, talk to me about it. I mm-hmm. want to read the inserts. And the, what they were saying was it's, it's just, you know, it's a hundred percent vitamin K. It's completely fine, safe and effective. It's that same talking point, safe and effective. And you actually brought some pretty interesting, um, news to us. So go ahead and sh- uh, talk to us about what was actually going on with this vitamin K. Right. Well, luckily, it was it was kind of a, a random, although I think nothing is random in the world, a conversation with Rob. And I had a nurse send me just last week um, a photo of the box of the vitamin K injection that they give. And then also a different company. She sent a picture of the vial. And this is things that we would never see when we actually go into the doctor's office. Right. We don't see they don't tell us in the they hospital. Just, it's just natural. It's vitamin K. Right. Well, in on the box on one of them, because there are two different companies that um that make it, um, well, three, but anyway, this was two of them. The main active ingredient is polysorbate 80. And that is, there are strong links to infertility, to autoimmune issues. Polysorbate 80 is banned in a lot of countries, especially in injectables. And that's the main active ingredient in one of the vitamin K solutions. Mm -hmm. In the other one on the vial, it says contains no more than hundred milligrams per liter, micrograms per liter of aluminum. And you combine that with the hep B shot, which is 250 micrograms per liter of aluminum. On day one, our children are getting 350 grams. 